Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to add text message bubbles to your video and to apply a simple animation to have them all scroll up at the same time. So in order to do this, we're going to need a speech bubble that we can pop into the video um, to use as our base image underlying the text. So this is the shape I'm going to be using. Uh, you can pop open a program like GIMP and just draw a simple shape and then import that into DaVinci Resolve or you can Google around the internet and find one that works for you. So just make sure you have the timeline and the selection of the clip you want to work on and go over to the Fusion page. And so while I'm here, because I only have one clip in the timeline, I'm just going to close out the clips to make more room. And I'm also going to open up the media pool so that we can drag the speech bubble into our nodes area. So note that this is a .png file. That's really important so that the area outside of the speech bubble actually is transparent. And then the video on the background can show through for the areas that don't contain the speech bubble. So if we take media in two and we put that on the left side, we should be able to see that speech bubble. We can also hit F2 on that media in and rename it speech bubble so that it's clear what we're dealing with. I'm also going to hide the media pool for now because we don't need that anymore. So next we're going to need a few additional nodes. So I'm going to right click, go to add tool and then go to composite and take a merge node. Uh, we're going to be combining the speech bubble input uh, with a text node later on, so we'll need to merge those together. And then after everything in our composition's done, we're going to want to also apply a transform node so that we can adjust the position of all of our speech bubbles all at once. So I'm going to right click and go to add tool, go down to transform and pick a transform node. So the speech bubble node should feed into the merge node and the merge should feed into the transform. And then we can take this transform and combine it with the original media in. So I'll right click, do add tool, composite, and add in an additional merge. Now uh, note that the media in, now note that media in one, the original background video, should go to the yellow connector here as the background. And then the transform should feed on top of that to the green connector as the foreground, meaning that that will show in front of the background. Then we can take merge two and feed that to media out. And then when we've set up this chain, you should be able to see the speech bubble pop in somewhere on the final media out node. If you're not looking at media out on the right hand side, um, you can click on your media out node and then make sure that one of those bubbles is checked to preview it up here. Okay, so next in order to add more control for the speech bubble, we can uh, right click and add in a couple more nodes. So I'm going to add in a color, color corrector node, which will allow us to change the color of the background speech bubble and then right click add tool transform and then transform again so that we can scale the speech bubble up and down and also change its position uh, as one independent bubble. So I will break the connection between speech bubble and merge one and I'll connect speech bubble to color corrector and color corrector to transform two and then that goes back to merge one. Uh, if you want you can select these three nodes right click and go to group in order to make them their own thing. So I can call this speech bubble one and we can double click to open it back up. And uh, the reason for grouping it like this is to make it clear that these nodes specifically control the speech bubble and nothing else. And so now we can click on the color corrector node if we want to change the speech bubbles color to something like green and just target it towards a specific color on the screen. And uh, basically you can have anything you want just by going around with this color wheel. So it should be quite handy. And then with the transform node, we can change the default position of the text bubbles. So I'll take the center X and I'll move it over to the right hand side for this clip, since there's a lot of empty space here. You can also zoom in uh, on the media out and change the filter method. If you find that stretching the size too much causes a little bit of distortion, you might get some better results with one of the other options here. So looking at it using cat mole ROM is a little bit sharper. So that's the one I'll go with for this tutorial. Though ideally, if you can bring in an image that already has a higher base resolution, that would be ideal. So you don't have to stretch it so much. So next we can start adding some text. I'm going to use a simple text plus node, which you can access in the toolbar. And I'm going to connect that to the first merge as the foreground, which means it's going to show on top of the speech bubble. Also rename the text one and just call it text message one, maybe a little clearer. And now we can start typing what we want the text message to say. So let's put something in here like, there's a problem at the office, can you be in at 10? 
And if you want to add a new line in there, just find the point where you want the new line to break and then hit shift enter to move the rest of the text onto the second line. You can also make the text lined up on the left by setting a left anchor on the horizontal anchor. So in text, go down to horizontal anchor and then choose the left anchor there. And now we just need to position and resize this text. So I will shrink the size a bit and I'll use the gizmo to put it into the place where we want it. And maybe we shrink it a little bit uh, while simultaneously making the text bubble bigger. So let's give it a size of three there. Reposition the text, uh, make it small enough to fit. So let's say 0 0.03. So we can resize the text, also change the font if you want to. So I'll make mine Corey a new here because why not? And let's just fit that into the space it needs to be. I'll make it a, uh, I'll click up here to make it a single viewer. We don't really need to preview the speech bubble on the left anymore. So we can just make this a lot bigger and uh, see what we're dealing with here. Take the top left and make it fit if you want it to fit the frame as ideally as possible. Okay, so at this point, I'll take the merge one and I'm going to rename it text message merge. And I'll take the transform here and I'll call it single message transform one. Because uh, I guess we'll have this just control everything over here. And we'll basically copy this node setup to create more messages. Also expand the speech bubble one group um, so that it's large enough to fit all of these things. I think at this point I'd like to take the uh, text message and these two nodes and put them in the speech bubble groups. So I'll just right click to ungroup these and I'll select all six of these nodes and regroup them. Uh, make sure you right click on one of the nodes that are selected in order to group or you can hit control G on the keyboard. And then this will just be message one and we can double click to open all that up. Now between this message one and the final merge, which I'm just gonna call that final merge here, uh, we're gonna need to break this and add in one more merge and one more transform because we're going to have multiple message groups. So we need to merge those all together and then there should be a transform on the other end of that so that we can move all of the messages at once and then the single message transform that we created earlier will now only be for controlling the message inside of the group. Um, so let's right click and add a tool for a merge node. And then we'll add in another transform. And I'll call this all message transform. And all messages merged. I'll connect all messages merged to all messages transform. Uh, break the connection between message one and final merge and now the transform all message transform goes to the final merge and the message one goes to all messages merged. So now we can set up a simple animation for these text messages. How should they pop onto the screen? So I'll go to like frame 20 here for the first one. Uh, we can always move the keyframes around later. I'll go to the single message transform. Let's keyframe the size there. Go to frame let's say 30, keyframe it again, and then at frame 20 here, which is where the animation should start, we'll just have it be a size of zero so that over 10 frames, it'll appear onto the screen by rapidly increasing in size from nothingness. So frame 20, size of zero. So now if we hit play on those keyframes, we're gonna have a bit of an issue because it's scaling from the pivot point, which is currently at the center for this transform. So we need to adjust the pivot point uh, to the center area. So I'm going to take the pivot position and make sure that that is pretty much centered on our message bubble. And now if we play back the animation one more time, it should be scaling up in place and that's probably what you want. Another thing we could do is go to, let's say frame 28 or 29 and make it a little larger than 1.0. And the reason we do that to set a third keyframe would be to have it get a little larger than its normal size and then shrink back down to the size we want it to appear on screen at. So another quick thing we could do is go to frame 28 or so here and uh, set another keyframe for the size. So we can make it 1.1 here if we want it to get a little bit bigger than its static size and then shrink back down to the normal size of 1.0. Um, over the course of those last two frames. So doing that will make it look a little bit like this. So you can see that there's a little bit of a bump where it gets to that max size and then shrinks down a little bit. Uh, I find that to be a little bit more interesting than just having the size linearly increase. So now assuming that you like how the text message is appearing onto the screen, we can basically go ahead and copy this message and start changing the text on the other messages. 
and also adjust the position so that they don't appear in the same spot. So let's take message one as a group, hit control C and then control V to copy it and we'll rename that message two. And I'll do it one more time to make the third message. So message three. And let's expand that node area so we can see what we're dealing with here. You can click the X on the top left of a group to shrink it down. That'll make it a lot more easy to see what's really going on here. So we're done with message one. I'm gonna close message one. And now we just need to take message two and connect that to the merge, that all messages merge. And actually these merge points only have uh, two real connectors there, foreground and a background. So I guess we can get around that by adding in one more. So I'll do add tool. And let's put a merge here and I'll call this message two and three. Two can go in there and then three. And then we can take this merge and make that the foreground for this all messages merged area. And now we just need to take these message groups and edit the settings in them so that we can change the details of the messages. So I'm going to double click on this message two. First, let's take the text message. So I will edit the text there. And since we're going to have her responding to the message, let's make it something like, yes, I can, dot, dot, dot. Uh, what happened? Okay, and obviously you can't see that because we need to change the position of everything. So we'll use the single message transform there and we'll move it off center here to below the first message. So now we have a really simple problem to fix, which is that uh, we want to differentiate between the sending and receiving text messages like every chat client would have ever. Um, so we can go back to message one and then we'll make this top text the receiving text. So to do that, we can click on transform two and let's do flip horizontal. So just click on this little symbol here and the image is going to reverse there. We can also change the position of the text to make it a little bit further to the left here. And then for the color corrector, we can change that again. So let's make it kind of like a gray color. You may also want to take the text messages and make the backgrounds a little bit transparent. So how we can do that is adding a uh, color curves to each of the nodes. So I'll go to add tool and add in a uh, color curves. We'll put it between the color corrector and the transform. So let's go ahead and do that here. And then we can uncheck all of the curves except for alpha. Decrease the alpha if you want the text message to be partially transparent and you'll be able to see some of the background come through. So we can basically copy the same node over to all of the groups. So I'll just paste that in there and fix the connectors. And then we can copy that into the third uh, message as well. If you'd like, you can take the sending messages and make that a little less transparent or vice versa. So I'll take the color curve here and I'll just adjust that point till I have the transparency I want for this green message. So I'll just take the color curves and adjust the transparency I want for the green message at the bottom. And now for message one, we'll need to change the position of the text since it seems like it went out of the bounds a little bit. So I'll just kind of pull that over there. And that'll pretty much be okay for now. So now let's edit the third message. So I'm going to copy the tent from this messages color corrector and paste that into the third message, since that's gonna be another reply from the person. So I'll just copy that tent value in and we'll need the strength as well. So go back to that one, copy the strength and let's paste that in there for the strength. And now they should pretty much look identical. We can also change the text inside of that. And uh, I know it's a little hard to see right now. Uh, let's actually, take the transform and we'll just move that up temporarily so that we can actually see what we're doing here. Um, so this message is actually gonna go below these other ones. I'll take the text message and let's say something like, it's really bad, period, and then hit enter to add a new line. There's literally no time to explain. And adjust the position of that text. So now with the transform for the speech bubble specifically, we need to flip it then we can adjust the position of the text to fit it once again. We'll take the single message transform to control everything and let's get it lined up over here. Actually, easy way to line it up would be to copy the uh, position from message one. So I'm gonna take that 0 0.641 value for the center X and copy that over, putting it there. And uh, now it should be perfectly lined up. That's what we want. With the Y value, I'll put that below that bottom text. So someone would like that where we can't really see it for now. Now we're going to need the final transform, which I called all messages transform 
to scroll as the text messages come in. So we can have the second text message start popping in about frame 50. So I will keyframe the center X at that point. And assuming we want the animation to appear over those 10 seconds, we'll just have it animate over those 10 seconds as well. So at frame 50, we'll have the animation start for the second text message to come in, which means that at frame 60, the text message should be on the screen. So let's set a uh, Y value for that, and let's pull all of these text messages up. Um, so I think right around there might be pretty good. And then let's have the third text message properly come in at frame 140, just for instance. So I'll keyframe that, go to frame 150, and I'll move the texts up again. As a really quick fix, let's adjust the distance between this third text and the second text. So clicking on the single message transform for that message, which is message three, uh, let's increase the white position until the gap between the texts is about matching. So that looks pretty good right there. Um, now we already have the animation for each of the texts to pop onto the screen, but we need to change the timing for when that happens. So to do that, we can open up the keyframes window in the top right hand corner. So go ahead and do that. And now we just need to open up message two, expand the single message transform. And if we zoom in on the timeline like so, you should be able to see those three keyframes we created. So now we just need to move those over um, towards, I believe it was frame 50 and then 140 respectively. So take the frame from 20, drag all of these over until it is at frame 50. You can see up here the little white notches will move along with that. And then expand message three and do the same thing. So I believe we wanted it at 140. So take these three keyframes, select them and drag it until you get to frame 140. It's okay to uh, do this in more than one go as long as you get it into the right keyframing. So that looks like the right point for 140. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this animation. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play in the timeline. We see that the first message pops up onto the screen. The second message pops in a little bit later. And then we have the third text message pop in at the same time that it gets pushed. So if you give it a chance to pre-render and go ahead and hit play, you should see the text messages and the animation happen at the same time. So there's the first message. The second message pops up as everything gets pushed upwards. And then we wait till frame 140. And we should get the third message popping up onto the screen as it pushes upwards as well. If you'd like, you can space out the messages a little bit more. So maybe I'll go into message two and I'll move everything back another 10 frames to frame 60. And as long as we adjust the transform displacement on the all message transform to match that, it should be really easy to go ahead and adjust everything so that you have the timing right. So now we can see we just bumped everything up 10 more frames. So it happens a little bit later in the video than it did before. So now it's just really a matter of playing with the settings and maybe adding in some sound effects. So we can see here, maybe we have a little bit too much alpha. It's a little hard to read the text there. You could also add in some drop shadow for this text if you want. I'm gonna hide the keyframes and let's just go lower the amount of alpha a bit. So in the color curves, we can just raise that setting to be a little less transparent. And so I'll just go ahead and bring that up. Make sure that everything still looks good. And that's pretty much going to be your effect. So now if you have any sound effects, you can just take those and line them up in your timeline with the animation. Okay, and then after everything's said and done, that's pretty much gonna give you your final result. So that's pretty much going to be it for how you can create text messages inside of DaVinci Resolve. I'm Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.